There's an arms race going on in the smartphone wars when it comes to screen size, but part of the reason why the iPhone 5 is winning that war is because it refuses to play the game that everyone else is. You're getting in the iPhone 5 all the features that people have been asking for, including real 4G and a larger screen inside one of the lightest and thinnest smartphones in the world. We're going to show you what we like and what we don't about Apple's sequel. When it comes to the iPhone 5, holding is really believing because when you get you this device in your hands, you're really going to be impressed with just how light and thin this device is. In fact, the iPhone 5 is an ounce lighter than its predecessor, and at 0.3 inches, it's the thinnest smartphone in the world. Despite that, this design is made of glass and aluminum, so it's a lot sturdier than a lot of the plastic designs that are on the market. So although the design is close to perfect, we do have a couple of complaints. One is that the lightning connector on the bottom, while it allows for a smaller design, really forces you to buy an adapter and it's about $30, which is a little expensive to accommodate older accessories, so that's annoying. And the headphone jack is on the bottom, which on the surface is not a big deal because Apple includes these new ear pods that have the built-in controls, but even when you're using the device with one hand, it can get in the way. It's kind of hard to make one of the best smartphone displays ever look mediocre, but the iPhone 5 does that in a couple of ways. One is the fact that, that you're now getting a four inch display, which is gonna accommodate all sorts of new apps being updated in the App Store, including this racing game. And if you look at the two screens side by side, you notice that it almost seems like there's a little bit of a film on the iPhone 4S because Apple, what they've done is that they've integrated the touch electrodes and the display itself into a single layer. So you're really that much closer to your content. Let me show you another example of the benefit of the added real estate. So if we go over to the web, you'll see that on our website on Laptop Mag, the extra real estate up and down lets you see a lot more content without having to scroll. The iPhone 5 is definitely faster than its predecessor thanks to a new A6 chip that Apple says promises up to two times the performance. So how does that really translate in terms of real world use? So if you try to fire up a game like MC3, this is a shooting game, the iPhone 5 is on the right, iPhone 4S is on the left. So it's not crazy faster but it's loading, you can definitely tell that there's a difference and this one is, is loading faster. And when you get into the game itself, you're gonna notice that the iPhone 5 has better graphics capability. For us, the most dramatic speed difference really comes in 4G LTE speeds, which is available on Verizon's network, as well as AT&T and a few cities for Sprint for right now. So if we load a site like New York Times, you're gonna see a really huge difference in terms of load time. So load New York Times, see how fast it goes. As you, can, as you can see on the right-hand side, the New York Times site is almost loaded. It takes anywhere between five and six seconds in our tests. And on the left, you can see that the iPhone 4S is just chugging along. So for all those people out there who say that they don't need to upgrade to the iPhone 5, I think it really comes down to how much of your life are you willing to waste waiting for pages to load like this. It's really no contest. On the Surface, iOS 6, which is the software that powers the iPhone 5, doesn't really look all that different than software from years past. In fact, the iconic design is getting a little stale for some, but there are some important improvements under the hood, and that starts with Facebook integration. So if you're on a website like this, you'll see that Facebook is one of the sharing options, so now it has the same status as Twitter. And if you want to update your status from anywhere on the screen, you can always just slide down from the notification center and you can tap to tweet, or tap to post, so that's really convenient. Apple's voice assistant has also gotten an IQ boost with the iPhone 5, and she has a lot of new tricks up her sleeve. So, for example, you could find out who won last night's game. Who won the Green Bay game last night? Packers narrowly lost to the Seahawks yesterday. The final score was 14 to 12. So this will be really useful at parties, but I'm more of a Giants fan, so let me see how they're doing. What are the NFC East standings? Okay, these are the standings for the NFC East. So that's pretty cool. And then Siri also can help you book a table if you want some reservations. Book reservations for two at the Blue Water Grill for tomorrow night at 9 p.m. So this is a pretty complex thing because it's going out to OpenTable right now, 
checking availability, and then if it works, you'll be able to, to book those okay. reservations with a tap. Has tables for two at 9 p.m. tomorrow. So that just tells you how much more convenient Siri is this time around. It's not just a gimmick. One of my personal favorite features of the iPhone 5 is shared photo streams. And it's sort of like a mini Facebook because you can choose the photos that you want to share with individual people without broadcasting them to all of your Facebook friends. So this is just one example where we have a photo that we took. And you can see that the photos have the comments overlaid right on them and you can see whether or not people liked your photos or if they had anything they wanted to add. So to us, this is a really nice feature to have, especially if we want to share photos with our kids or anything else when we're on a trip. Now we come to one of the most controversial features of the iPhone 5 and that's Apple's homegrown Maps app, which simply isn't as good as Google Maps, but it does offer some features that you didn't have before. One of them is the 3D flyover effect, so if you're in a big city like New York, you can use your two fingers to zoom down right here. You can see all the buildings in 3D mode, so that's kind of cool. And you didn't have turn-by-turn -turn navigation before. So if we wanted to go in here and do a quick search, so the home option is always available, so that's a good, good one to do. And you start your route. So we do, on West 19th Street. we do like the clean interface that's available here, and you notice that it started right away, partly because you have those 4G LTE speeds in the background, so that really helps load the maps fast. Apple has come under fire for its Maps app because it's not as accurate as it could be, and in a lot of cases, it's just wrong. So let's say, for example, we wanted to search for the Brio Tuscan Grill, and this is in Freehold, New Jersey. The address that it brings up is actually, we looked this up on Google just to make sure, this is for an animal hospital on Route 9, instead of what should be at the mall. So, and then there's tons of examples like this. Plus, unlike Google Maps, you don't get local transit directions. So if you're looking for subway directions, you're gonna to have to use third-party apps. Apple says that it's gonna be working with third parties to integrate this kind of stuff, but it just seems like this came a little too soon. There's no question that Apple took longer than the competition to deliver certain features that people have been clamoring for, especially 4G LTE speeds. But when you think about it, it was really worth the wait because you're getting all of that goodness inside a design that really beats the pants off the competition. You get a better display and a better camera than a lot of Android phones inside something that's almost unconsciously portable. And for those reasons, we're giving the Apple iPhone 5 four out of five stars in our Editor's Choice Award. This is Mark Spoonauer with Laptop Magazine.